Vancouver police and city workers were back on East Hastings Street today, clearing remaining tents and structures. Show up with tents, show up with food. We don't need the city showing up with guns and pitchforks. The province says 36 people were removed from the area yesterday as police cleared an encampment. Mayor Ken Sim said there was an urgent need for action in Vancouver's downtown east side with significant safety issues on the rise. The mayor's ABC party campaigned on improving public safety, addiction and mental health issues. The clearing of this encampment was seen by many in his party as an inevitable part of addressing these issues. Pete Fry is a 30-year resident of Vancouver's East Side and also a city councillor with Vancouver's Green Party. He joins me now from Vancouver. Pete Fry, it's good to meet you. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you're a longtime resident of, of the downtown East Side and you're a city councillor. I mean, was clearing these encampments in this way, was that the answer? Uh, you know, not, not doing anything was no longer a, a possibility in this particular instance. Uh, there could have been some different approaches with uh, with the the clearing of the encampment, although I was on site, and I think that it actually, all things considered, went relatively smoothly. Uh, and, I, and I have to commend some of the activists on site who actually were uh, quite active in, in, in de-escalating some of the situation that could have been a lot worse than it was. Um, but I think, you know, for folks who may not be familiar with the downtown east side, this is the, one of the oldest parts of Vancouver. We're talking about a lot of really run-down, single-room occupancy hotels um, that are uh, unreinforced masonry with plaster and lath and balloon framing. And we've seen a, a number of catastrophic fires uh, that are being uh, set from outside the, the, the building. And so these increased fire risks are really putting a, you know, a lot of pressure on this sort of last housing stock. And, and for a lot of the folks who were living in the, in the, in the neighborhood, either housed or unhoused, uh, they were reflecting that they were feeling less safe. And, and as we had a number of, you know, pretty significant fires. In fact, just Friday, we lost a, a number of rooms to a fire that was a burning mattress outside the building and, and fire department could not access the fire uh, because of the tents that were in front of the building. So at, at a certain point, we just had no choice but to make some kind of a move. Right. So obviously when you're having unexpected fires and you're losing, it becomes a safety issue. Um, but what happens to these individuals who are living in these tents and sleeping on the street? I mean, where have they gone now that they've been cleared out of the east side there? Yeah. So um, my understanding from the report back that we just got, we uh, saw 10 people uh, to uh, receive shelter beds yesterday and then another person today. Uh, and there was about 36 people who were displaced um, uh, and uh, 81 structures that were removed. So does is everybody so, have somewhere to stay though, uh, uh, counselor? Do they, no, I, no, I don't believe. I, I don't. I do not believe they do. No. Uh, in fact, certainly there's tents that are back up today. I know that some people were sleeping rough in in different parts of the city or or just adjacent to Hastings Street. Uh, and I think that's where um, we we have a, a real struggle because, to be totally honest, the shelter system is not adequate for a lot of folks. Uh, they're not necessarily safe. They're often not clean, um, and and we have the same problem with a lot of this this single room occupancy hotel stock as well. And and when we look at this, in particular, this SRO stock, which is 100 to 120 years old and and operating well past its its mm -hmm. useful and practical life, we we have to really step up the delivery of of appropriate and 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 quantity housing um, in Vancouver and obviously across across British Columbia. But you've lived in that area, right, for, for three decades now. And, and yeah, this, this, yeah. Is, this is not a new problem for that part of Vancouver. I, I mean, why is it 2023, and this is the 10th time in 10 years, that this kind of a cleansing of the street uh, has had to happen, that these underlying deficiencies in, in shelter capacity and space, why haven't they been addressed? Well, I, you know, that's a, that's a larger conversation, I think, yeah. all, even a national conversation, but certainly, you know, as a local government, we're not really in the business of building housing. That's something we, we look to the province and, and provincial partnerships for. And we're recognizing that we have a steady stream of folks who are arriving in our city, uh, but we're also seeing a confluence of, of growing housing unaffordability in Vancouver. And as I mentioned, this aging stock, and I think the, the, the newest dimension that we're seeing in 2023 is the extent of these catastrophic fires. And that's something I haven't seen uh, as much as, as, as of late in, in my 30 years in the neighborhood. Um, and, I, and I think that's something that uh, has us pretty nervous because um, we're seeing a lot more propane tanks. We had 
you know, dozens of propane tanks removed uh, in yesterday's operation. And we had a huge explosion with uh, a number of propane tanks that, that took out the front of a building uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it included a 100-pound propane tank. So when we, when we have fires of that nature with, with volatile explosive tanks uh, involved, these are, these are, this is a new dimension that we haven't experienced. And, and I think that that really demands uh, some attention. The bigger question, of course, is how we really address the housing shortage in, in the city of Vancouver and, and elsewhere. And I think that's where we're just putting a stopgap Band-Aid here. Um, and we need to really address housing. And in, in a country like Canada, uh, the fact that we have the extent of unhoused people as we do, uh, it should be a short source of shame for for all of us. You you said you saw some tents back up there already today, right? So I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I yeah, know a lot morning of there was tents back. Right. So so how do you know in a couple of weeks this the, these streets won't be back and, and full of structures and full of people sleeping there in tents again? Well, I think we're certainly not we're not we didn't solve homelessness yesterday. Yeah. That's for sure. So we will see uh, continued people. I think what what yesterday did serve to do is a little bit of a level set. And so that we can maybe more proactively address uh, tents as they, they pop back up and as encampments uh, start developing. And, and mind you, there's a lot of uh, structures here that were being built with shipping pallets and tarpaulins and various different things that were more than just domiciles. They were actually, you know, sort of community hubs. And I think there's an opportunity as well to maybe start looking at how we can better activate some of the vacant storefronts along Hastings Street and actually put them to some somewhat of a better use so that we're you know, serving a, a vulnerable population that have nowhere to go and are basically building their own places to go, um, I think we could do a little bit better with that as well. And that has been something we've been talking about in the city of Vancouver is how we can better activate some of the vacant storefronts along there. Okay, uh, Vancouver City Councilor Pete Fry, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me tonight. All right, thank you. Okay, joining me now with her perspective is another city councilor, it's Lisa Dominato. She is a member of the mayor's ABC party. Councilor, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, thanks for having me on. I, I wonder, was this the right time to move in on this account? And why do you think it had to happen now? Well, certainly um, we've heard, and I know you've heard uh, from both uh, public safety officials that this was necessary at this time. Uh, we were having reports from Vancouver police about uh, rising violence and issues in this area. Uh, our fire chief, Chief Karen Fry, uh, had identified increasing number of fires uh, adjacent to buildings, in tents, the use of propane. And in fact, we've had uh, over 500 fires since the start of the encampment. So again, significant um, risk in terms of life and limb. And uh, also what we were hearing from organizations in the downtown east side is uh, growing uh, sexual assault violence against women in this area. And this tends to be the typical evolution of uh, encampments is that while they may start small, as they grow, uh, what we see is predatory behavior that evolves. And, and it's actually directed towards those very people who are homeless on our streets. And so it becomes a very unsafe environment. Um, and so those were some of the reasons for advancing this week. Well, when living on the streets like that becomes an unsafe environment, the solution would seem to me to give them a safe environment to go. But as I understand it, there is no clear safe environment for the people who are living there to go to. So what do you expect the people who weren't necessarily involved in these more unsavory activities, where do you expect them to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. So our objective is to get people into either safe uh, shelter or permanent housing is the ideal. Uh, we have been working actively with BC Housing and Vancouver Coastal, Coastal Health and other agencies uh, to add uh, shelter spaces. So in fact, we've added uh, over 400 shelter spaces over the last three years. And we, uh, I think, roughly sit around 1,300 at any given year. And that's 75% of the region's uh, shelter housing actually is in Vancouver. But really, we want to get people into permanent stable housing. There are various reasons that people do uh, find themselves uh, on the street. In the case of uh, my colleague, Councillor Fry, was referring to some of the SROs. Some people don't feel safe uh, in those SROs or the conditions of those SROs. And so we're actually embarking on a replacement strategy with the province for those. Um, but uh, certainly, uh, we recognize the need for that safe shelter and safe housing. 
Right, but it's not just the SROs or the single room occupancy hotels that, that people don't feel are safe or don't feel are up to code. Uh, there are have, have been concerns expressed about even the city shelters not being safe, not being clean. So, so I mean, how quickly do you move on this? Because this has been a persistent problem in this particular part of Vancouver, uh, made worse during the pandemic, as I understand it. So how quickly do you move on actually putting more of this infrastructure in place to, to give them that safe sp space to go? Yeah, well, we're absolutely working with the province right now to accelerate um, more supportive housing. We do have more coming online. Um, and in fact, uh, another project that we worked on jointly at council last term was uh, to trial uh, a small tiny homes pilot. So you said some of the sh people don't feel safe in shelters where these are actually self-enclosed units um, that provide sheltering uh, space on a temporary basis. Uh, but it is a complex issue. We've heard from the province this week, they've announced a, a new housing strategy. Uh, the premier has indicated a uh, strong interest and working with the city on the complexity of the issues we're seeing in the downtown east side. Uh, but we are working to accelerate that and to add more housing supply. Okay, so they've been, people have been moved out of East Hastings, but, but how do you ensure that they don't just move somewhere else to another part of the downtown, to another block of streets, and, and sort of rebuild uh, what was there? Well, certainly um, that is a risk. Um, we've had a number of individuals who've accepted shelter last night uh, from us where there was shelter space. Um, and, and we do know right now is that people can, uh, the courts have spoken that people can shelter in space in parks and that may happen uh, overnight. And then they have to take down uh, uh, their tents and other materials. And so that may happen in this instance. Um, but again, it just drives home why we really need to be working collaboratively across all three levels of government, not just the municipal level, provincially, as well as nationally. And I, I also sit on the FCM board uh, with my colleague, Councillor uh, Rebecca Bly. And these are conversations we're having nationally about um, the significant challenges we find, particularly uh, on the West Coast, uh, with individuals who are struggling with homelessness and the importance of investing in safe, secure housing and that we need to be working together. But I wonder what's the bar here for repeat enforcement. I, I heard, uh, you know, spoke with Councillor Fry. He talked about building pellets and tarps and 100-pound, uh, you know, uh, propane canisters uh, being set up on the street. I mean, there's already tents back today. Is the plan to go in and clean them out again? Or is it is there a critical mass that has to be there in a, a, a critical level of risk uh, before there's an enforcement action? Because the, the shelter solutions and the housing solutions are clearly uh, not going to be done before people start to move back onto the street in that area. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, our staff, uh, along with support of other agencies, have been working actively in specific blocks along East Hastings uh, to remove uh, tents and structures. Um, they will be continuing to monitor that um, because, again, back to um, you know what our fire chief was saying is just the growing risk of serious fire. We've actually had a number of SROs uh, um, that underwent fires uh, this last year. And in fact, there's been a loss of life. And with these combustibles, with the propane tanks, with open fires and tents. Uh, so I know that um, our first responders will be monitoring very closely um, the evolution. Okay, City Councilor Elisa Dominato, thank you so much for joining me from Vancouver tonight. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much for your time.